Why does every device these days have to be smart? It's a simple question, one that I haven't really given a lot of thought into until now, but I'll get into that later. The smart device you're probably the most familiar with is the smartphone. You're probably even watching this video on it right now. The first smartphone was created by IBM in 1992 and released in 1994 under the name Simon Personal Communicator. Who honestly comes up with these names? It was the first ever touchscreen phone and it had the ability to send and revise emails and faxes. It also had a calendar, address book, an appointment schedule, just a, a very basic organizational device. And for years after this, many different companies improved on the idea and refined the smartphone. Now look, I'm not here to suckle on the dead teeth of Steve Jobs, but look, we can all admit, that guy knew how to make a phone. In the first ever iPhone announcement, Steve Jobs basically shit on all of the other smartphones at the time. They're not so smart, and they're not so easy to use. And released the iPhone, uh, which I don't know if you know much about the iPhone, but it kind of caught on. Now look, I know what you're thinking, shut up, get to the point. What does this have to do with anything? Yes, I know, I'm getting there. His use and implementation of the word smart exploded the term and since then just like when everyone started saying literally to describe literally anything the term pretty much lost all meaning literally smartphones weren't the first smart device uh -uh -uh, though no, they weren't. so where did the term come from arguably the biggest market for smart devices is the home the smart home if you will and it was through this desire to make a smart home that the first smart device was invented i give you the Echo 4. The Echo 4 stood for the Electronic Computing Home Operator. If that is not the most science fiction shit I have ever heard, how do people come up with these names? First, it was the Simon Personal Computer, now the Echo 4. Did they just watch 2001 A Space Odyssey, see the HAL 9000 and think, let's just make up an acronym that sounds kind of cool and slap a number after it. The Echo 4 was invented in 1966 by an engineer named Jim Sutherland. It could compute shopping lists. It could control the temperature of the house. It could turn appliances on and off. Pretty much what you would expect a smart home to do now, except in 1966. This particular model was never actually sold, but the kitchen computer that was developed in 1969 was. Apparently. Now look, according to this article I was reading, the alleged tagline for the kitchen computer was, if she can only cook as well as the Honeywell can computer. Yeah. At the time they were asking $10,000 for one of these units, which equates to about 80,700 US dollars today. Who is, who is spending that on a shopping list? Not only that, but just to operate the device. You needed to take a two week programming course in a programming language called BAC just, just to operate it. Granted this programming course came with the purchase, Thank God. Good to see that that $80,700 is not going to waste. Now look, although this particular concept didn't take off, the obsession with creating a smart home didn't end there. Since then, the home has been the main target of the smart market, and you cannot buy an appliance today that doesn't have some sort of a smart equivalent. Smart kettle, remotely boils using an app. One hour keep warm function, that's that's actually kind of cool. Boils incredibly fast and notifies you when the kettle is boiled, which, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. It kind of defeats the purpose of having a notification if the kettle boils really quickly. You know, odds are you're probably still gonna be in the kitchen. Speaking of appliances with a sole function, we also have the smart refrigerator. What makes it so smart, you might ask? After all, the fridge's sole function is to keep food cold. And to that I would say, oh, I don't know, maybe the fact you can connect it to fucking Spotify and listen to music from your fridge. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let that sink in. You can listen to music from your fridge, the thing that keeps your food cold. Who is doing this? They also boast about how you can browse from a giant screen on the front. This, this is like a perfect example of just putting features on something for the sake of putting features on it. Like you're, you're fixing a problem that doesn't exist. Never once have I been in the kitchen and thought, oh, I wonder what Karen's doing on Facebook. If only my fridge had a giant screen on it that I could log into Facebook on and just have a scroll through on that. It's like if a pen could tell the time, you know, it's an easy feature to put into a pen, a pen with a little clock on it. Oh, that's a bit different, a pen that can tell the time. But why? When would I ever need a pen to tell the time? I use my pen to draw dicks on things. I don't use it to tell the time. This fridge does, however, have the ability to see into the fridge from anywhere and tags the food expiration dates, which is pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. It can also create shopping lists, food memos and reminders, and it has this whole morning brief feature, which is kind of cool. But then you can also play games on it. Is this, is this one, 120 hertz refresh rate? I'm not playing games on a fridge if it hasn't got 120 hertz refresh rate. No way. This is not a gaming <laughs> fridge. 
Did you get the Asus gaming fridge? Oh, it's a Samsung, oh god. And finally, we have my personal favorite. And by personal favorite, I mean the most useless shit ever, the smart microwave. These things have like 50 different settings depending on what kind of food you're reheating. And honestly, who uses these? I used one of them once and my food came out like molten lava. I just put it in for two minutes and, and if it's still cold when it comes out, I just put it back in. There's no need for these functions. But this smart device phenomenon stems so much further than just the home though. Just think of any product and I guarantee you there is some bootleg Kickstarter that's trying to make a smart device equivalent of it. Smart water bottles. Keeps your drink cold. Like, like a normal water bottle. But this one in particular also glows to remind you to drink water and track your water intake via a Bluetooth app. Look, it's kind of cool, you know, tracking your stats like it's a video game. But at the end of the day, it's a water bottle. Okay, it's a one liter water bottle. You drink the entire water bottle. Guess what? You just drank one liter. It's really not that hard. The smart backpack. What's so smart about it, you might ask? And well, I'm glad to give you the answer. This smart backpack can charge your phone. Get a power bank. You can still charge your phone and you don't have to lug around a backpack the entire time when you want to. Smart shoes. That's right. They can track your activity just like a couple of other devices I can think of that don't require you to wear the same pair of shoes every day. These shoes are so smart that they don't even require shoelaces. These shoes have the same technology that Darth Vader would use when he'd put his helmet on. Guys, it's okay. Not every single aspect of this shoe has to be smart. We can have laces. It's all good. Everyone knows what laces are. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you really want to go crazy, put some Velcro on it. I'm just saying. They actually boast this feature where the shoe can actually heat up to keep your foot warm. Can you imagine the stench that would radiate from these bad boys after having your feet in them heated all day? Man, I put on a sock that has one too many fibers and my foot comes out sweating. I cannot imagine what they'd be like in these shoes. Now, the whole reason I'm making this video is due to a recent purchase I made involving a smart device. I bought a smart TV. In theory, a smart TV sounds like a great idea. A TV where you can use all your favorite streaming services through the TV, as well as just using it as a regular TV. Well, this TV does do that, but it is incredibly frustrating in so many ways that it shouldn't be. If this TV is so smart, let's see it answer some math, huh? <laughs> What's one plus one? One plus one equals two, but I think you knew that already. Damn, that is a smart TV. Let's start with the remote. The simplest possible remote that they could get away with and still call it a remote. I'm gonna say it, simple controllers are dumb. More button, more faster. It's fine for something like Apple TV where all you gotta do is navigate their weird little menu, but an actual TV remote needs more than this. A third of these buttons are just shortcuts to streaming services, so already off to a bad start. I don't even know what the multicolored number button does, so that's useless. Opposite that is the multi-view button, which I have also never used, so that is also useless. But you know what is missing? Arguably the most used button other than the volume and the on button. And that button is the source. Where is the source button? To change source on this TV is so overly complicated. It's so unnecessary. Look how long this takes. The source button is locked behind literally every other menu tab on the TV. This wouldn't even be that much of a big deal if the TV actually remembered what I was watching before turning the TV off. You know, like a normal TV. No matter what HDMI or app I am on beforehand, every time I turn the TV off and then turn it back on again, it goes straight to world news. And it's never good news. Ugh. Thanks for the weather update, Tom. In other news, seven children have died in a country you've never heard of. And while attempting to rescue them, the entire building collapsed. Right, I gotta read this part off the script because it is so complicated. If I have my PS4 in rest mode, it will turn the TV on, go to world news, realize the PS4 is in rest mode, turn the PS4 on, switch the source, then switches the TV mode into gaming mode, which all in all takes about 10 seconds and there is nothing I can do about it. What I'm trying to say here is this TV is not smart. I, I would rather a normal TV that does not have any smart features on it. A TV I just turn on and it remembers what I was on when I turn the TV off and just puts me there. Straight up the best thing to come out of this whole smart device thing is being able to whisper to Alexa and have her fart. Alexa, fart for me. Okay, here's fart noise. <laughs> Someone 
man's been eating beans. Ask me for a 10 farms. I mean, it's comedy gold, isn't it? Anyway, thank you all for watching and sticking it through to the end. Um, leave a brain emoji if you made it this far. Leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All the cool kids are subscribed, but I'm sure you already know this. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>